Hello guys and welcome to Boat Crew. This is a sponsored video where I'm going to be taking a first look at the game, how it plays and what I personally think. Boat Crew is a game about the Pacific War. You are in control of a PT boat and crew and your task is to disrupt enemy supply and weaken enemy defences, sometimes even take on larger targets. By fulfilling these tasks, you intend to weaken the enemy enough that a raid will be performed by your allies to take territory affected by your endeavours and eventually conquer the Solomon Islands. The best place to start is of course the tutorial. It's reasonably thorough and takes you through most of what you need to know to get started. I'll try and briefly sum up the mechanics. Basic controls for moving the boat is WASD, but the way the boat moves is kind of realistic, meaning you'll have to account for inertia. Camera controls are simple, you can rotate the camera to look around and you have the ability to zoom in or even use binoculars. There is also a targeting mode which you will spend a lot of time in which will be used to designate targets for your crew to automatically engage. You might notice I said automatically. A lot of the actions your crew take will be automatic. You can manually prioritise by selecting a member and right clicking an icon on the ship but most of the time you will likely be dodging incoming rounds and focusing your crew's target fire. It is possible for men to be thrown overboard by nearby explosions or direct hits, and in this case it's not only important that you go and pick them up, but also replace their role temporarily if it is important. You can do this by selecting a member of the crew and pressing the corresponding hotkey for a position. It's actually pretty intuitive when you learn it. I had a situation actually where my skipper was thrown overboard, leaving my ship without a driver. So I had to manually get my second in command, who was currently acting as a medic, to take over. Things otherwise would have ended very badly as the enemy zeroed in on my position. One thing the tutorial makes sure to teach is don't be put off by running away. Losing your ship comes with a penalty that can really set you back, so saving your own bacon may be the best play. As for weapons and enemies, there is a lot to consider, some of which are not actually mentioned in the tutorial and basically require trial and error. Your smallest enemy is landing craft that you will encounter during enemy assaults on your territory. They can be nasty if you get in range of too many at once as they will all engage with their machine guns. Your best way is to take them out also with your own machine guns which can be upgraded to have more range and firepower. Following that is enemy PT or river boats. These again need to be respected as they are similar to your own craft. Preferably moving so that you can take them on one by one is ideal. The next tier is the larger ships, like supply ships and even destroyers. Whilst you might want to avoid directly engaging a destroyer, you can engage these large craft with torpedoes or even mortars. These weapons do take practice and torpedoes can take up a lot of your budget. However, as their capability increases, they are very necessary to take on the largest of targets. Next, there are planes, which are dealt with using air support or your own machine guns. Submarines are also present and require you to use depth charges or rockets to destroy or surface them, allowing you to engage with machine guns or autocannons. Finally, there are replacements, which defend bases around the region. These can be tackled easier with a mortar or heavier weapons, you can even get an AT gun on your ship. Finally, there are support assets like air support or artillery that can turn the tide of a battle in a pinch or help you mop up. At the beginning of the game, it will be important to know what weapons to use for which situation and not being well prepared can have deadly consequences. This is because you'll initially be limited to a budget, forcing you to change your ship's weapons composition each time you go on a different mission. This leads into the next layer of gameplay, the campaign. After putting together a crew with different traits that you need to consider, this acts as a navigation chart where you can move your vessel around to different locations and intercept enemy forces. You can use old fashioned line of sight or radar, even transmit to your allies if you need a hand, but radar and transmitting can increase your threat level which causes enemies to hunt you down in turn as you'll be giving away your own position. You have limited fuel on this map, so prioritising an objective is important. Do you want to go recon a few bases? Do you want to intercept supplies? Do you want to assault enemy fortifications? Whatever it is, you also have to consider your armaments. 
By completing objectives, destroying important assets, and gaining more territory on the map, you get a currency called RP, and is the budget that I mentioned earlier. This is used to get upgrades for your vessel, like mortars for attacking bases, rockets or depth charges for the submarines, and plenty more. It's also important to carry resupply, such as medic boxes, extra ammo, and repair kits. These and any torpedoes are automatically replenished each time you visit a friendly base, which you should do often. At these bases you can also cycle your crew, and potentially equip your men with life jackets or armour to increase their survivability. The way I like to think of the system is as you build your reputation, hence RP, the military designates you more resources and support. The interesting thing about Boat Crew is the campaign isn't linear, it's really up to you what you want to do in order to help your allies succeed. If you do nothing, they'll still act on their own. There is a cohesive supply system on both sides which is used to upgrade bases. By intercepting enemy supply you prevent enemy hardpoints from growing. You can directly attack them and weaken them, allowing your allies to make an assault which you may want to support. Also important is keeping your own supply route safe, so your bases grow, and this is done by intercepting enemy battle groups and helping on the defensive during assaults. It seems the game encourages you to be more aggressive overall, but you do need to be very careful which fights you pick, as it can get out of hand very quickly if you overestimate your power. The way in which you win the campaign is by helping your allies control more territory so your victory points start ticking up and by completing other side objectives like hunting special targets. Once you get to 100 victory points, you win. Now aside from the campaign, if you don't have time to complete or load up the campaign, or you need a bit of practice, there's also challenge missions which you can use to quickly test your skills in different scenarios. For such a simple concept, this game has a lot of depth that is only being continually added to by the developers since it's still early access. I personally had a lot of fun zooming around and helping the Americans take the Solomon Islands, following the footsteps of my granddad, who was actually a British petty officer on a PT boat once upon a time. I think this game is a great pickup, and reasonably priced for the amount of content it includes, with plenty more to come. Hopefully you enjoyed this first look at Boat Crew. I'll leave you a link in the description to the Steam page. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.